I've been hiking in California, primarily the southern part of the state, for the last 15 years. About five years ago, I really started to dial in my backpacking gear, and over that time I figured out the gear that keeps me safe, efficient, and comfortable in the backcountry. In this video, I will show you the equipment that I plan to bring with me on my 2023 hiking trips. The video's description features a link to my lighter pack, which provides additional information on every item such as the manufacturer's or retailer's website link and the weight. Due to some physical restrictions, I function at my peak with an ultralight base weight, and my present collection of equipment weighs in at slightly less than 6.5 pounds, not counting my camera equipment. If you prefer a heavier load during your hikes, that's perfectly fine. I trust you will still find my video informative and worthwhile. My go-to backpack is a Mountain Laurel Designs Burn 38 liter backpack. It's a frameless pack, but it rides very comfortably. I like its large side pockets and mesh front pocket. It comes in just a hair over one pound. The shoulder straps are comfortable and I like its slim profile. It also closes with a roll top enclosure, which I like, and it has an adjustable Y strap, which is useful if you need to carry anything on top of the pack, such as a sleeping pad or bear canister. I have thought about switching out packs for a few years, but the burn is so comfortable that I just haven't bothered. I line it with a Nylofoam bag. The pack is made of waterproof Dyneema composite fabric, but it isn't seam sealed, so I use the Nylofoam bag to keep my down quilt dry, as well as anything else I'm concerned about getting wet. Nylofoam bags are made of a special nylon polymer film to protect food and other items during fumigation, hence the name. They work great for keeping backpacking gear dry, too. I have an aftermarket pouch on my shoulder strap to hold my phone, which I like to keep close at hand as it does serve as my primary source of navigation and I don't like to keep it in my pockets. This pouch is nothing special, but it's roomy enough for my large phone and a charger and it clips onto my pack easily. To carry my food, I use a light AF flat bottom bear bag. I do usually hang my bag when I'm able to, regardless of bear activity, mostly to keep it away from rodents. However, even if I plan to sleep on or near my food, this bag is great because it holds a lot of food, it compresses down easily as I consume that food, and it's a vibrant color that I can see from far away. I use a Z-Pax mini stuff sack to contain any ditties I don't want floating around my pack, such as my toiletries, knife, and electronics. I keep this in the front pocket of my pack. I carry a Dutchware ultralight steak bag to hold my steaks in. This is a lightweight DCF bag, but it's reinforced at the bottom with X-Pack, so I don't have to worry about the stakes poking through the bottom. Even with all that, it comes in right around 3 grams. One of the benefits of hiking in Southern California is that most of the time I have clear night skies and very few bugs, so I started taking advantage in cowboy camping. I do bring a sling fin split wing tarp along in case I end up needing some protection from the weather. This is a highly packable tarp that I can pitch in a variety of ways using my trekking poles. On longer trips or when I'm in a group and might want more privacy, I'll bring my Durst and Xmid, but the split wing is my go-to shelter for most of my trips. A key component of my shelter is my Cascade Mountain Tech carbon fiber trekking poles, which, in addition to being trekking poles, serve as the structure for my tarp. These are lightweight, durable, and what I like best of all, inexpensive. I stake everything down with a combination of MSR Mini Groundhogs and Easton Nail Stakes. This gives me versatility when pitching my shelter. My only note here is to use the 8-inch Easton Stakes. They hold so much better than the shorter ones, and the weight penalty is essentially nothing. Underneath my tarp, I use a polyolefin ground sheet. This is variously called polycro or polycryo in backpacking circles, but no matter what you call it, polyolefin is a thin insulating film used to cover windows. It's very lightweight, it packs down ultra small, but it must be used with care as it is a bit flimsy. I use a ground cloth to keep dirt off of me and my gear, but more importantly to keep myself away from any dew or ground moisture. I've switched to the polyolefin this year after using Tyvek for the last few years, mostly due to the weight savings, and I'm anxious to see if there's much difference between the two. My go-to quilt for the past four years has been the UGQ Bandit 20 degree quilt. I initially bought the Bandit because it was fully customizable, so I was able to build exactly the quilt I needed with no features I didn't. It has a pad strap attachment system that I can use to secure it to my sleeping pad on colder nights. 
or I can leave those at home and use it more as a blanket. It's also got 950 fill power down, so it lofts really high and has an efficient warmth to weight ratio. It's a 20 degree quilt, which is more than adequate for me even deep into shoulder season. If anything, it can actually sleep a bit warm in the summer. I do sleep with an inflatable pillow, the Sea to Summit Eros Ultralight Pillow. I cover it with my buff to keep it clean and to prevent it from slipping around. I've debated the last few years about switching to a compressible pillow if I can justify the expense, but for now, this gives me everything I need to ensure a proper sleep and recovery. This year, I'm switching back to the Thermarest Z-Lite Soul sleeping pad, which I've cut down to just the length of my torso. I've been using inflatable pads, but they tend to run a bit warm for my three season needs, so I'm gonna pull the Z-Lite out of storage and see how it fares. With an R value of two, it should be more than enough, and the weight savings is pretty significant as long as I find it comfortable enough. After all, I'm not 20 anymore. Uh, deeper into shoulder season, I'll probably pair this with my Mountain Laurel Designs Goodnight EVA 1 8 inch foam pad for a little additional warmth. I keep my hydration system extremely uncomplicated by design. For the past several years, I've used smart water bottles with an inline Sawyer squeeze, but I've been wanting to try the Katadyne Be Free filters, and this year someone gifted me a Be Free to go along with the one I already had so I'm taking that as a sign to give them a shot. I don't like to cook on solo trips less than a week long. I don't drink coffee and I've never been the kind of backpacker who needs the morale boost of a hot meal at the end of the day, so I'm content to go stoveless. If anything, it just makes the post-trail cheeseburger taste that much better by comparison. I don't always cold soak, but when I do, I use a Talenti jar. One of the best things about it is that each one you buy actually comes with a free pint of ice cream. I also carry a UCO 3-in-1 utensil to eat out of the jar. It's fine, nothing special, uh, but it does have a spoon, a fork, and a serrated edge to cut things if need be. This year I'm moving away from headlamps. Uh, I don't tend to hike into the night, so my illumination needs are pretty simple. Uh, I'll be hiking this year with a Photon Freedom Micro LED light. This light is tiny, weighing just 7 grams, and it clips onto the gear loop on my hiking shirt, so I'm never without it. It provides more than enough light for anything I need in camp. My phone is the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. It's big and it's heavy, neither of which thrill me, but it's my phone, so that's what I bring. I use this to play music, as well as, as my primary navigation source, and as a backup photo option. It does actually take very good pictures and video. For charging, I bring an Anchor Power Core 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank and a small USB to USB-C cable. The bank is pretty lightweight for its capacity, the lightest I've found, though admittedly I gave up trying to shave weight here a few years ago, so it's altogether possible there's a lighter option on the market. I also bring along some cheap earbuds to listen to music while I'm hiking. I bring along a spare pair of socks, uh, the Darn Tough Hiker Quarter Cushion Socks. They're light and comfortable and don't give me any hot spots, but I primarily only wear them in camp. I prefer hiking in different socks, which I'll discuss later in my worn clothing. That said, if my go socks get wet or dirty, I have absolutely no issues hiking in these. In last year's video, a bunch of people called me stupid light for not bringing a dedicated rain jacket. I think those people skipped the video and went straight to the lighter pack because in the video I did explain that in Southern California we hardly ever get any rain in the summers, so my DWR treated wind shirt was enough protection for all of my trips. Uh, this year's pretty wet though, and I decided to look for a shell that I could add in place of the wind shirts. I didn't want it to weigh much more, but I also wanted to be able to ventilate it because I tend to overheat and wet out from the inside when hiking in a rain jacket. Enter the Light Heart Gear rain jacket, which has a full zipper and pit zips, allowing for a lot of temperature regulation options. Uh, I don't have enough experience with the jacket to give much feedback, but I will say that my customer service experience with Lightheart Gear has left a lot to be desired, so I hope the product itself can at least top that. One of the things that's on this list, but which I don't bring on all of my trips, is shell pants. I bring these body wrapper dancer pants if I'm expecting wind or a cold camp, but if I'm being honest, many times they don't make it into the pack. For upper body insulation, I stick with the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer. This is a stop piece, so I wear it on breaks and in camp. Uh, I go back and forth on bringing a fleece, such as my Melanzana hoodie, but 
I'm typically warm when I'm moving, so the Ghost Whisperer is my go-to piece here. At just over 8 ounces, it's an excellent jacket. Finally, I do bring a head net on most of my trips. We don't get much bug pressure in Southern California, but it's a non-zero amount, and the weight penalty is less than an ounce, so I'd just rather be safe than sorry. The knife I bring on all of my trips is a Swiss Army Victorinox. I've tried other knives, but keep coming back to it for its versatility and lightweight. Obviously, I'm not doing much bushcraft on my trips, and I completely understand why other people might want a multi-tool, but this has everything that I need. My poop kit is a deuce of spades trowel, some Dr. Bronner's soap, toilet paper hand sanitizer, and some towels that you add water to to make wet wipes. I carry a mini Bic as an emergency fire starter or to cauterize any wounds, and one of those ridiculous ultralight backpackers who carry a Lightsmith thumbprint toothbrush. I have no shame. I pair it with these crush and brush toothpaste tablets. My compass this year is a Sunto Clipper. I have historically liked to have a bigger compass if only to practice backcountry navigation, but I'm going to try this out this year to see if it will be enough for me. I'm still on the fence, but at less than 0.2 ounces, the benefit is obvious. My buff is a multi-purpose item. I'm going to put it here to include its weight, even though I do often wear it as a neck gaiter. I also carry lip balm, sunblock, and squirrel's nut butter anti-friction with my first aid kit. A link to a video about my first aid kit and what is included in there, as well as an explanation of why I don't weigh it. Most of my trips I actually don't carry any additional camera gear, uh, which is why I don't count the weight against my base weight, but I did want to give an idea of what I do carry when I'm recording video for the channel. This year I've switched to the Sony ZV-1F as my camera of choice. I still love my Panasonic Lumix G7, but the autofocus seems to have gone from bad to worse. Now the ZV-1F is portable, it's super easy to use, and it has great autofocus. I don't have to think too much about it, which is good because as much as I love sharing my adventures with you guys, it's the last thing I want to have to think about on the trail. This setup makes it a much easier decision for me to bring the camera so that I can share a trip. I put the camera on a Pedco Ultrapod, which is not my favorite, but it's super simple to use and to pack, which gives it a big advantage. I've tried a lot of tripod options, and this is the easiest one for me, so it has the edge. On bigger trips, I may still bring my GoPro Hero 10, Panasonic Lumix G7, or even my Nikon DSLR, but ZV-1F is the workhorse now. I will likely do a longer video just on my clothing, but for now, here's my go suit for 2023. Sun hoodies became my favorite thing a couple of years ago, and I still love them for a lot of reasons, but I also have some problems with them. Namely, they tend to have limited ventilation options and no gear storage capabilities. I found these Wrangler Men's Performance Utility shirts last year and ended up buying three of them. I'm glad I did because they don't seem to be available anymore. Now, this shirt has a button uh, and loop to allow you to roll up your sleeves, as well as a button down front to regulate your body temperature. It also has two breast pockets, one of which has a gear loop to hold your lip balm, snacks, permits or anything you need to access throughout the day. My shorts are whatever running shorts I have laying around in a 5 inch NC. I wear these Nike Flex Stride shorts pretty often despite the fact that they have a hole in them because I like that the key stash pocket is on the hip and not in back. I don't like to keep my car keys in my pack and carrying them on my hip is a lot more comfortable than on my butt. No other shorts I've found with stash pockets on the hip have zippers and the zipper on the stash pocket makes me feel a lot more secure. The socks I hike in are Cloudline Apparel No-Show Running Socks. They're very similar to Darn Tufts, which everyone else seems to prefer, and don't get me wrong, I do carry Darn Tufts as my backup, but the Cloudline Apparel socks have never given me even a hint of a hot spot, and they do have a similar warranty to the Darn Tufts. They're also made in the USA, which is a pretty nice added bonus. Uh, I do like to carry two different types of sock to further prevent hot spots and blisters. Last year, my Ultra Lone Peak 4.5 finally bit the dust, so I switched to the Lone Peak 5, which I had bought on sale the previous year. They should carry me through this hiking season, at which point I'm not sure what I'll do for shoes. Ultras have gotten really expensive, and for shoes that tend to crap out after 500 or so miles, I'm not sure they're worth it. 
I'm exploring options, but in the meantime, the Lone Peak 5s have been great. I throw some Dirty Girl Gators over the Lone Peaks to keep debris out of them, and I top it all off with the REI Co-op Screeline Sombrero, which is just an absolutely hideous hat that I bought on sale in 2018 and refused to replace, because my only issue with it is the aesthetic. Uh, it has a wide brim to keep the sun off my face and neck in the absence of a sun hoodie, so the benefits outweigh the drawback, which is that it's very ugly. So that concludes my 2023 ultralight backpack and gear list. As mentioned, I've tailored this equipment to the specific areas and conditions where I usually go backpacking. If I'm expecting terrain or weather outside of that, I will substitute some items. The key is to plan for each trip individually. Regardless of your location or base weight, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up as it will assist the channel. Thanks for watching and I hope 2023 brings you new hikes and new heights.